So we're going to walk through our information and settings for really our initial setup with our Seedstar 4 and Seedstar 5 planner. Very similar whether it is Seedstar 4 or Seedstar 5. So uh, to get into these settings, I'm going to go to my Seedstar hotkey at the bottom. If I don't have that Seedstar hotkey at the bottom, I can go into menu. And within machine settings, I have my Seedstar application. So right here, this is where we're going to do all this initial setting. So to get to our settings, I'm going to hit that little arrow up at the dot at the way top. Um, and from right here, we're going to just go down the list of our settings. So um, initially, we have our options for use advanced population setup. Um, I can turn that on, turn that off. Uh, realistically, for most of our customers, we don't use that application. Um, and one instance where we do use that is in Seedcorn, um, and we'll run through that in another video. So as I continue to go down, when I get to my fast start option, um, we have enable or auto enable fast start on planner down, then override section control during fast start. So on this first checkbox, when it is checked, it is turned on. Uh, so auto enable fast start on planner down. So when this happens, um, or if I have this checked and enabled, when I lower the planner from a stop, it's going to start turning our meters as soon as we cross that planner start stop height. So as soon as I drop the planner, if I don't start moving, those meters are turning and we're dropping seed. Otherwise, we're not going to start dropping seed until we see movement. So most of our customers, we are leaving that on. That way we don't have a skip if we do drop the planner. Um, so if I was planting through the field, I stopped, lifted my planner up. I don't have to back up, drop it, and then take off. If I lift the planter up, I can just lower it right where I'm at and then take off and it's going to start dropping seed as soon as that planter drops to the ground. So most scenarios, we do leave that one enabled. The override section control during fast start, uh, what this is going to do is if I'm in an area where I've already planted or I have coverage, it's going to override that coverage from a section control standpoint and it's going to start dropping seed. So it will enable seed. We will see those spots if we were in the headlands and we dropped the planter. It is going to drop seed there if we've already planted that area. Um, most scenarios, we do leave that on. Um, some customers, they do turn it off because they don't want it to overplant or drop seed in those spots. But that's what that um, checkbox is going to do. As we scroll down, we have our option for our speed sensor. Uh, we should default to auto on. That's the recommended setting. Um, and a non-John Deere planter, we may have to adjust these a little bit. Um, based off of what we're getting for, for speed from a radar source. Do we have a wheel speed sensor? Things like that. So, uh, typically we want to be an auto from our recommended. Um, one way to test it, if we do start driving, we should see speed, um, on our, um, indicator at the right side. So all good there. As we continue to go down, we have our start stop height uh, from our height sensor. So from here, we can adjust this. Um, so we want the planner to start turning, start dropping seed and turn off when those true Vs are coming out of the ground or just as they hit the ground. So from here, if I lower my planter to the ground, my true Vs are just starting to touch the ground now. So I can set this to that 37% point. Um, and that's where that um, setting will start and stop at this point. So was it 40? It's going to end up at 37. So not much adjustment there. Um, I can adjust or turn off the common threshold. So if I wanted it to stop or start at different percentages, um, that's how I would do that is um, adjusting that common threshold. Um, another option from here is if this is a new planner, we've never calibrated the height sensor, or if you need to do a calibration, we can come right to that calibration at the bottom and walk through that height sensor calibration procedure. Okay, we'll come back. We have that common threshold. I'm going to set it to 36 as that's where I want moving forward. Continue to go down. We have our downforce adjustments then. So for the incremented increment adjustment, um, at what level does each adjustment on the plus and minus adjust? So here we're set at five. If I want to be bigger adjustments, I can set it to 10 pound increments. Uh, I want to say default 20. Uh, to me, that's a little higher than I want. I want to see that at five so I can fine tune that more as I run through the field. Our pause timer. So if we are running through the field, we have a changing condition and we want to pause our system so it doesn't make any adjustments. When we hit pause on our downforce page, that's how long that timer is actually going to run. Um, more times than not with our hydraulic downforce system, we aren't even running that pause system through the field, um, but that is what that indicator is associated to. Uh, we continue down, we get to our back automation adjustment. Uh, default is two um, pounds on that adjustment point. Um, to me, that's a very high number. I want to fine tune more than that. So I'm going to actually go to 0.5. Uh, we could go smaller than that if we wanted to. Um, it just depends on how many times we want to hit the plus and minus if we are adjusting our back pressure um, with our back automation through the field. 
Okay. Then we get down. We have our SCV assessment or assignments. So if we are doing, uh, easy fold back automation, we would come into our SCV settings. And this is where we would assign. Are we doing the automated system for our frame control, uh, to do easy fold? And are we doing our VAC system, uh, for VAC automation? So if I come next. Here's our current settings. So if I actually had an SCV on a different setting, um, so if I had to swap, uh, if I was having issues with an SCV and I needed to move SCV to an open SCV, I could do that and move them uh, from that assignment standpoint. So this is where we're going to adjust those assess assignments so we know those VACs are on three and four in this instance. We're just going to cancel out of that application and continue down. So with our closing wheels then, we can come down and we can actually disable any of those groups. Um, I mean, I'm not sure in what aspect we would actually want to turn them off. Um, but here we want to make sure those are on. So they actually do have control, um, uh, within our run or within our run pages for our, uh, closing wheels. And then we also have the option for the alarm notification at the bottom. So if we are having or in uneven terrain and we're seeing those airbags change position quite a bit, um, we, can see some low pressure alarms as those bags um, expand and, and things like that. So if those alarms are getting annoying, we can turn them off uh, depending on the group. Um, just know you won't have any alarms then um, if we do have airlines come off, things like that um, going forward. So I would recommend leaving those on all the time. Um, our CCS system, so a few things here. Uh, we can turn the on and off if we want our blower blowing and then also for our agitation. Um, if I was doing a test plot and I didn't want my agitators moving, I can actually disable them from here. Um, same thing with that CCS blower. And the other one, the other common setting is uh, notify notification of rows that are not planting due to section control. So we see a lot of sliders come down as we plant into our headlands if this is turned on. Um, if section control is turning off rows and rows aren't planting because of it, do we want those notifications or not? So with this enabled, we will see that slider come down at the top and tell us that these rows aren't planting due to section control. If that's kind of a nuisance thing that, yeah, I obviously know I'm over this planted area and they're not planting. If you don't want to see that message, you can go ahead and turn that off. So those are our basic settings for our Seedstar 4 and Seedstar 5 planners. Um, once that setting is done, that will stay until any of those settings are changed uh, from the operator.